Hey folks, my name is Trace, and welcome to Carbine 101. Today we will briefly be going over the operation of AR pattern carbines, body mechanics, and sight picture. It should be noted that we will be going over mechanics and manipulations presuming you have a same sided carbine. That is to say, a right handed carbine operated as a righty would, or a left handed carbine as a lefty would. But before we get into that, as we always do, let's go over the four cardinal rules of firearm safety. 1. Treat every firearm as if it's loaded. If someone clears a firearm in front of you, tells you it's clear, and hands it to you, you cannot take their word for it. It is up to you to treat that firearm as if it is loaded and verify its status yourself. Two, never point your muzzle at anything you do not wish to kill or destroy. It is up to you to make sure that you do not muzzle sweep anyone, even if that person carelessly walks in front of your barrel. Your muzzle is your responsibility and at no time should you be pointing it at anyone. Three, keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. On AR pattern carbines, you will keep your finger high up on the lower receiver without touching the mag release. Do not rest your finger on the trigger guard, as that is a common way that negligent discharges occur. One moment, you are adhering to rule number three. The next, you are being treated by your buddy for a gunshot wound. Four, know your target, what's behind it, and all around it. Keeping situational awareness at all times is your responsibility. If a person or an animal wanders downrange, you need to be cognizant of that and respond appropriately. You also need to be aware of where that bullet will ultimately rest. Do you have a solid backstop that will catch the round? In a defensive scenario, do you know what's on the other side of a wall behind your target? Or if that wall could stop your projectile? Every projectile that comes out of a firearm is your legal and ethical responsibility. The four rules of firearm safety aren't the only rules to consider when handling firearms, but they are the four most important rules to commit to memory. Other rules you must become familiar with are the unique rules of your range. Usually, these rules are posted in a conspicuous location for you to refer to. To comply with cardinal rule number one, you must be able to clear a weapon and check its condition. The process for both is very similar. First, while keeping your muzzle pointed in a safe direction, you place the fire selector in the safe position. Second, you remove the magazine by depressing the magazine release and guiding the magazine out of the magazine well. Make sure to stow the magazine someplace handy, like your back pocket, a dump pouch, or if you have one, a shooting bench. Third, you will need to pull the charging handle all the way to the rear and depress the bottom of the bolt catch. This will lock the bolt carrier group to the rear. Fourth, ride the charging handle all the way forward. We don't want to release the bolt on an open handle as it may damage some cheaper charging handles. Fifth, you will visually and physically inspect both the chamber and the magazine well to determine that they are empty. You have now cleared your carbine and verified its condition. It's a very similar process to clear your carbine of a malfunction. For now, check out our Pistol 101 video where we talk about clearing malfunctions. In the future, we will dedicate an entire video to dealing with malfunctions on the AR platform. Good shot placement starts with a good shooting platform. Today, we will be starting by building your shooting platform from the standing position. There are many stances and grips, but today we will focus on only one. Your stance will look a lot like a Muay Thai stance with some minor variation. Starting from the ground up, our feet will be spaced shoulder width apart. The toes of our foot that correspond to the same side of our body as our shooting hand will be in line with the back of the heel that corresponds to the same side of our body as our support hand. This will function as a kickstand that will resist the rearward force of our recoiling carbine. Our knees will be bent slightly, such that we get a little bit of springiness in them. We don't want to lock our knees, and we don't want to be doing the 1980s tactical cop squat. Our hips will face our target directly with a slight bend forward. Our shoulders will also be squared to our target. Our grip will start with our shooting hand, which is the hand that will be operating the trigger and fire selector. For the vast majority of people, that will be your dominant hand. 
The webbing between your thumb and forefinger will rest high on the grip with your index finger resting high on the receiver. Don't rest your finger in or on the trigger guard to help comply with cardinal rule number three. Your thumb will rest near the fire selector, pressed against the receiver, and your remaining finger will wrap around the grip as high as they can. Your support hand will reach as far out on the handguard as safely and physically possible while your carbine is shouldered. Your thumb will wrap over the top of the rail and your fingers will cup the bottom of the handguard. Bring your sights up into your eye box and onto your target while making contact with your face on the stock. Depending on the height of your optic, what makes contact with the stock will be between your cheekbones and jaw. Just make sure that you make solid contact. Now slide the butt of your carbine back into your clavicle while keeping your sight on the target. It's common for some new shooters to chicken wing out one or both of their elbows. Let your trigger elbow drop to your side while your support elbow will be parallel to the ground. It's also common for new shooters to shrug the carbine up to their face. Don't shrug. It gets painful very fast. At this point, you should have four points of contact with your carbine. Your clavicle, your face, your trigger hand, and your support hand. And you should be looking through the sight at your target. Now that you're in this position, let's do some dry fire practice. But please note that dry fire is always done with a cleared weapon. There should be no ammo near you or even in the room. With your trigger thumb, flip the fire selector from safe to fire. Take your trigger finger off of the receiver of the carbine and place it on the trigger. Slowly and steadily press the trigger to the rear. When you hear and feel the click of the trigger, you are free to remove your finger from the trigger and place it back along the receiver. At this point, your trigger should be dead because the hammer should be in the forward position. There was no explosion of gases in the carbine so as to push back on the bolt carrier group, resetting the hammer to the rear. Additionally, the hammer being forward prevents us from putting the fire selector back on safe. To remedy this, we will have to manually cycle the bolt. To cycle your bolt manually, we will start by bringing the butt into the crook of your trigger elbow while keeping the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. You may need to adjust your stock to do this comfortably. Then, with your support hand, you will grab the latch of your charging handle and pull the charging handle all the way to the rear and let it go. Then, get your C-grip back on your handguard and with your trigger thumb, place your carbine on safe. Now try this dry fire cycle a few more times just to get the hang of finding your stance and grip, putting your sight on the target, and running the fire selector trigger and bolt. Now let's add in proper sight picture and sight alignment. We will briefly be covering these in the context of red dots and iron sights. Sight alignment is when your sights are properly aligned in your eye box. For red dots, what proper sight alignment will look like is when your dot is in the middle of your optics window when you look through it. For iron sights, proper sight alignment will be when your front sight is centered in the middle of your rear sight post iris horizontally and the very top of your front sight post will be centered in that iris vertically. Sight picture is when you superimpose your sight alignment over your target. Proper sight picture for a red dot is simple. All you have to do is put that dot on your target. Proper sight picture for your iron sights is a bit harder as you will have to focus your eye on your front sight post instead of your target before you take your shot. Now let's do some more dry fire with proper sight alignment and a good sight picture. Before moving on to that though, ask yourself how well you've been observing cardinal rule number three. While doing this drill, ask yourself, how well am I maintaining control of my muzzle by not pointing it at things I do not wish to destroy? How's my breathing? Do I feel short of breath? Am I holding my breath? How are my shoulders and neck? Are they tight? Is my body tense? Do I need to maybe put the carbine down, shake it out and get loose again? Be aware of what your body is doing, and if you feel like you need to make any adjustments, then take this time to do so. Now that you feel comfortable holding your AR and running a few of its controls, let's put some ammo in it. We'll start by loading a magazine. Hold your magazine in your support hand. If you are low on grip strength, you may want to brace the bottom of your magazine against something. Take a cartridge and press it into the low side of the follower with your thumb, with the primer facing the rear of the magazine and the bullet facing the front. Rub your thumb along the case of the cartridge rearward to make sure that the cartridge is all the way seated to the back of the magazine. If the cartridge is too far forward, then the bullet will collide with the front wall of the magazine, preventing you from loading more rounds and will even prevent you from loading the magazine into your carbine. 
Now that you have one round loaded into your magazine, put that mag in your pocket on the support side as you will be grabbing it out of that pocket at the firing line with your support hand. Now that we're at the firing line with a partially loaded magazine and your carbine, it's time to clear your carbine, verify it's on safe, and get back into our stance. Remember, feet, knees, hips, and shoulders. Just for some extra practice, let's get another proper sight picture. Nice. Now place the butt of your carbine in the crook of your trigger elbow with the muzzle pointed down range and your finger off the trigger like you did earlier. Now with your support hand, grab that magazine out of your pocket or pouch, insert the magazine into the magazine well firmly, and then give the magazine a quick tug to make sure it's fully seated. Now pull the charging handle with your support hand all the way to the rear and let it go. Since you aren't trying to lock the bolt back, the buffer spring should send the bolt carrier group and charging handle all the way into battery. You shouldn't ride the bolt forward at this point because you can cause it to not seat fully into battery. Just pull it all the way to the rear and let it slingshot closed. Conversely, if the bolt is still locked open from clearing your carbine, then you can just press the bolt release with your support thumb and the buffer spring will send the bolt home. Now with a good stance, grip, side alignment, and sight picture, we are going to come up on our target, make the decision to shoot, place the fire selector and fire, place our finger on the trigger, and slowly press it to the rear. All right, you should have gotten a bang. So slowly let the trigger back out and put your finger back along the lower receiver. Place your fire selector on safe and roll your carbine over to visually inspect your bolt. If your magazine and bolt catch are working properly, and if you did in fact only put one cartridge into your carbine, then the bolt should be locked open. This happens because the follower in your magazine presses up on the bolt catch after the last round and catches the bolt carrier group. This is called last round hold open and is a pretty awesome feature of the AR-15 pattern rifles. From here, bring your carbine back to the crook of your elbow and with your support hand, grip your magazine. After you got a grasp on your mag, depress the magazine release with your trigger finger and guide the magazine out. Now stow it somewhere handy like your pocket. All right, clear and make safe. Repeat this last drill until you feel comfortable with how the carbine will operate and you've demonstrated yourself sufficient safety habits. After that, feel free to load up a magazine however full you want and try to empty it without clearing your carbine in between shots. If the bolt doesn't lock back on its own, there is probably a round in the chamber. If you need to take a rest between shots but don't want to clear your carbine, just lower your sights below your sight line while keeping the muzzle pointed down range and the butt pressed against your chest. This is the low ready position. If you ever get a click when there should have been a bang, just clear your carbine like we discussed in this video. Well, that's it for Carbine 101. Please remember that these videos are not a substitute for training with an instructor, so get out there and find someone to work with. I'm Trace, and have a great day.